Yo guys, what is up? This is Tom from Unreal Madden. Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how to basically photo scan everything. So what I did is I went out into the forest and I searched for something I can photo scan and I found this little tree stump after some searching. And what I did is I just took so many photos of it from every angle. You can see them here. And what is very important is that it's a cloudy day and you don't want harsh shadows because this is not good for the photo scan at the end. And what I would really recommend is shooting with a camera in raw format or going to your phone and then setting it to pro mode. And make sure you have the same white balance every time because if not, you get different tones of white and you don't want this either. And what you do is go to Lightroom and load all your photos in. Okay, so this is the photo I'm using. If you don't have Lightroom, you can use other software of course too. And I will go to the right and then just try to get the shadows out of there. So with this, you want a very flat photo. You can see the before and after right here. And then you can just go to the plus in Lightroom and save your preset. Okay, and once you've done that, you can select all the photos with shift left click and then just batch assign your preset from this menu at the right and then just export them all. Okay, now you need a program for constructing the mesh. I'm using Meshroom, the link is in the description, but you can use other programs too. And then just drop your image files right here. And once the files are loaded in, there's nothing more to do. Of course, you can go through all these settings and change the parameters to your liking, like the texturing, you can adjust the texture size and stuff, but I'm not gonna do that right now because for me, these settings work. And basically the only thing you have to do is save your file because this will be the file destination where all your files are saved later. And then you can just click on start. Once the process is finished, you can see the bar is green and the files are already saved on your computer. So there's nothing more left to do and you can close Meshroom. Now we are in Blender and what you have to do is go to file import obj and now you have to import your textured mesh from the file destination i mentioned earlier okay i loaded in the mesh and it looks like this you see this is not good and what we want to do is grab the mesh then rotate it and press one so we can drag it a bit up then three to the other side view and then just adjust it to your liking. And then from top view again, and the object is centered. And in textured mode, it looks like this. Of course, you don't have to photo scan something from the woods. You can do whatever you like, whatever works the best for you and whatever you need. And the next thing would be, go to the viewport shading again, then control A, all transforms so it's easier for us to drag it around and then go to top view edit mode and go to the x-ray mode and what you have to do is delete all the unnecessary vertices around your object so just select them and press delete delete vertices and just repeat that process Now we reduced it to this little part. Let's delete all those vertices at the bottom too. And from here, an easier method is to grab the select circle and now go on with the process. And again, press delete vertices and they are deleted. Now you can go back to object mode. And what we've done is we re reduce the vertices by a lot. 
and currently the mesh looks like this. And as you may notice, the vertex count is really high at this point. We can check it out at the statistics and it's 135,000 and that's way too much in my opinion. So you could keep it at this point if you like, but what I do is just go to my object and I have this plugin called Quad Remesher and you can just click on Remesh and it will remesh your mesh. But if you don't have it, you can go to this tab, the modifier tab, and just grab the decimate modifier and decrease the ratio to something like 0.1 and you can see only 26,000 faces and that's a lot less faces than before. And optionally, you can apply a subdivision surface too, but I'm not gonna do that at this point. Another option would be to remesh it by hand. So you just would grab a plane and delete those two vertices and you would have this line. And then you just would have to go around your object and try to remesh it as good as possible with all the details. But as I said, I'm just going to remesh it. Okay, now I have my remeshed mesh. It looks like this. You can check out all the vertices with face orientation. And if everything is blue, that's good. And everything is blue here too, except the bottom and that's fine. And what we can do now is bake the textures. So we're going to UV editing, then grab your retopology mesh, press A, U smart UV project and you get the projection of your mesh. Then let's create a new texture, call it tree stump underscore albedo because we're baking the albedo map. Then 4096 by 4096 pixels and turn the alpha off. Okay, then we can assign a new material Grab our image texture and from here select the tree stump albedo. Then let's show our textured mesh again. Switch the render engine from EV2 cycles, GPU compute, and set the max samples to a value that's a bit lower. I go with 200 and also the light paths to 2. Okay, now we can go to bake and set the bake tab from combined to the fuse. Then turn off direct and indirect lighting and press select to active. And for the margin, I will set the size to 5000 pixels because I want it to cover the whole image. I will show you an example of how a low margin looks. And this is a high margin. And I just like high margins more because I don't have black in my images. But of course, a low margin will produce images that are smaller in size. In the end, it's up to you. And the most important step is to have selected to active enabled and then click on your textured mesh. This is very important. And then control click on your retopology and it has to be in this order to work, then make sure you have clicked on your tree stump texture and then just click bake and wait. Okay guys, the texture is baked and if your mesh looks exactly like this, you have to go to your textured mesh again, scale it down a little and then increase the max ray distance to a value like 0 0.05 meters and then you can bake it again and hopefully it will get better. If setting the max ray distance to a higher value doesn't work for you as well, you can go back to layout, then grab your low poly mesh, control C, control V, and then scale it up so it covers everything. Then rename it cage and make sure it really covers every bit of the model. So you can do that with proportional editing. 
Okay, this is some work, but once you are done, you can go back to the shading tab and then click on cage, select your cage object and again go to your textured mesh and click control left click on your retopo mesh and then just click bake. Okay guys, now my model looks like this. What I have to do now is decrease the specular and we got this nice model. We can grab a sunlight and rotate this a bit. Let's delete this light or just hide it. Give the sunlight more brightness. And you can see this looks good from every angle. Now the last step for improving this model would be to generate a normal map for the tree stump. You can do this online at normal map generator links in the description or with programs like shader map. I generated a normal map and a roughness map and then you search for normal map, set this to non color and you can plug it in. So this is with the normal map and with the roughness, it looks like this. So this is your finished photo scan. I hope you liked this video and it was helpful. If yes, please leave a thumbs up. If not, leave a thumbs down. I'll see you next time and bye.